in the network in telecom industry were the uh, product network product solution providers and system vendors. From the enterprise IT industry perspective were the ICT infrastructure solution provider. And then from a consumer side, and we are, you see the smartphones over, uh, and uh, we are also the client side solution provider, product devices as well. So it's a combination of the three. Okay, this is Huawei. And uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to talk about how the big data are going to drive the network transformation. Okay, and now, how much you know about the network infrastructure? People normally see the devices, right? Routers, switches, the optical, the base stations, and so on. But y'all, on the other hand, the infrastructure the typical carrier consists of hundreds of thousands of the local exchange offices, the hubs, the pubs, ranging from the core, metro, edge, to the access of the network. It's, and the new transformation is really to transform all these hundreds of thousands of the pubs and local exchange office become a cloud-oriented, disputed architecture. This is what the cloud-based network transformation. And geo-distributed edge intelligence. And it across four domains. So we are familiar with SDN, okay, so which decouple the control from the hardware devices for the network, so software-defined network. We are heard about the NFV. Network function used to be embedded in hardware, now become virtualized, which is easily scalable. Okay, abstracted, programmable, okay, in the data plane. And also we heard about domain operation plan, which moved to the, from the legacy silos to the DevOps world. And more importantly, the telco in the business transformation. So how do we enable the new business, the new digital economy? Where is the new value proposition across the four domains? And it's disputed architecture, but logically centralized, as the right slice picture shows, okay, from Cloud OS, Network OS, PaaS, and so on. But the core of that is the big data engine, okay? Now, this big data engine is different from the centralized data analytics, which will cross all these four different domains, okay, and also will be widely distributed Think about these hundred thousands of the pubs, the local exchange will become the next generation data center, the cloud, where to improve the user experiences, to optimize the networks. This is what are moving forward. Now, let's further look at it, you know. The, how this big data will play, okay? It's about six years ago, we initially, you know, when I joined Huawei, we actually quickly built a big data team in Silicon Valley. I recruit people from Google, Yahoo, and other places. So we quickly put the big data analytics team, which largely influenced by these open source initiatives in the Silicon Valley. Okay, so in early days, we decided to take the open source strategy. Okay, and back in 2010, I recall, we have the two first committers to the edge base. And also through our engagement in research with Berkeley MLab, we quickly identified Spark so we immediately to integrate, integrate all this together. So, not just open source component. We focus on the system management integrations, data government, and more importantly, security, okay? And we also identify to focus on the business sector uh, just started with the telecom industry and also banking industry. That's what we initially started to prove to see how we can get engaged to leverage back in 2010. Okay, you can see the customer basis now. We have very much engaged. And also through the whole process, we build data modeling, algorithms, 
tools put things together. Now, the learning, the best way to learn, to build our capability, is to contribute, engage in the open source community. That's why in the last several years, we have been in top five contributor to both Hadoop and Spark ecosystem, as you can see the numbers of contributions and patches and so on. But through the, we take a more pragmatic approach. Through this process engage with the business, we identify the issues, we solve the problem, we contribute back. For instance, HPACE, we introduce the secondary index, which improved the performance by 3x, the index project. Okay, in performance on Spark, we introduce optimized new smart query rules, which improved the performance by 5x. Okay, we further introduced the SQL distributed architecture on HBase, so enabled the better integration with Spark for analytics and uh, applications. On HDFS, we introduced Erasure Node just by itself. It saved the storage cost by 50%. This all contributed back. We learn, we build our capability, and that's the best way for us in the play in the ecosystem and also get to contribute to the ecosystems. That's the overall our old strategy, and more are to come in. Now, instead of going through the technical side, I want to give you a case in Shanghai Unicom, okay? And um, which is a about more than two years ago, we actually delivered five big data engines to different department business unit within Shanghai Unicom. Okay, then we realized that big data is sharing, open, right? So the two CEO on both sides made a commitment, sponsored the project, put all this together across the siloed fragment unit, business unit. Okay, it's a big effort. Okay, so we are talking about, you know, consolidate nine legacy systems from the different business unit and department into a single big data platform. Okay, we identify them through the engagement. Initially, we didn't know exactly how to do it. And we identify 30 business cases across the business department, okay, different domain, operation, network, business, marketing, new sales, existing business, and so on. So you can see today, every day, you know, we talk about 60 million subscribers. So we move the about 13 terabytes a day generated, analyzed. So overall, you see the business perspective, success. Over the year, we measure what we actually can achieve with this big data. So here it shows an example. The promotion success rate targeted, understand user behavior, increase by 6x. And not only that, just eliminate those invalid promotion, save the budget by 25%. Okay, the churn rate always has major issue in China. Uh, so especially for the high-end users. So we improved the churn rate by 21%, roughly about 200,000 subscribers will be able to re stay with the customers, with the pro pro uh, service providers. And more for new business, we talk about how to enable this new data asset value, create the value propositions. So we have uh, more than 10 partners work together. So for the existing business, we see the monetized earning last year is about 12 million. This year actually measured. And also for new business, like for this advertising, target advertising, uh, 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 the real estate, and so on, it creates additional $3.2 million, okay? That's very important through the engagement, domain knowledge, consolidation, and migration, the process. Much go beyond this component. And these slides I want to show go beyond. You can see the next generation of the network, talk about IoT, in the new digital world, every industry, okay, will become digitized, okay, will become uh, programmable through the internet, go to the cloud to create a new value proposition, horizontally, vertically. 
Okay, how do we form these new analytical ecosystems? It's not just in the network. It's not just in the data center. It can also embed it into the, all the industry sectors. Okay, so how do we build such an ecosystem? That is a challenge. We talk about IoT connectivity, intelligences. This connectivity not just hand, handle process in the data center. Large of these data, we talk about big data streaming happens at the edge. Now how do we support this? This is the challenge we all ahead of us. Okay, today are rather fragmented in reality. So I want to sum up with this identified three major challenges. One is we're missing today, we call geo-distributed tiered streaming architecture, analytic architectures. Be beyond the current, more centralized data center analytics. Okay, look about this. We have hundred thousands of these things, the uh, disputed data center in the network. Okay, and secondly, with lack of network telemetry framework in SDN NFVs, because today largely the data collected through the pool, through the synchronized op op uh, operations, which is no longer valid, okay, to enable the real-time observation, control, and on-demand to support. And finally, we lack of, really we need to push forward to have this, I call it end-to-end -end analytic ecosystem across the data center, centralized, disputed network edge intelligences, and IoT network devices, such that we can truly horizontally, vertically, to achieve the intelligence, the IoT connectivities. This is what the next generation, 100 billions of machine-to-machine -machine communication will come through. Okay, and more than the consumer market, go to the industry market, and so on. Thank you very much.